I'm Dr. Michael Latola. And I'm Megan Strong. In today's Case of the Week, we take a cheeky look at our newest zirconia product. An Outback Steakhouse gives new meaning to the term blue plate special. And a dental staff member throws a party at a dental office. She forgets to invite the dentist, the hygienist, the assistants, and the front office staff, but remembers to invite the felons. That and more on today's Chairside Live. Hello and welcome to episode 89 of Chairside Live. Megan, how are you today? We're doing well. And the two of you. The two of us. Yes. Um, guess what? What? Dun 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 dun. It's a girl! Oh wow. A second big announcement. Big announcement for the day. Yep. We and? found out on Monday. And I'm so excited. But I knew it. I knew it from day one. I told Brandon, my husband, uh, when I first found out, I'm like, it's a girl. Mm -hmm. He was like, you don't know that. And I said, Yes, I do. And I was right. Well, in all fairness, you had a 50-50 chance of being right. That's true. That's what I like about, uh, I, I like when women uh, take that ring, you oh know, my, take a ring and put it on a string it. and hold yes. it above the stomach so you can tell what it is. Right. I'm like, well, there's a 50-50 chance you're going to be right. So you're going to yeah. have a story about a friend of yours who was right six times out of ten or every time sure. she's tried it. Now, if there was um, 20 different possible sexes for a human baby, hardly ever correct. Right. The, the, the ring never actually works. But you did it the real way. What do you mean? Well, you went and had like a sonogram. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, this wasn't like an old wives' tale kind of a deal. No, we went and we got to see in the ultrasound, you can see her face and the little outline and um, and then her feet, which was so cute. So it was a 4D ultrasound? Not mine. Oh, oh okay. I, But I've seen those. My sister-in-law had a couple for both of her kids. Um, it's an elective procedure unless there's a need medically okay. for you to get one. Um, I didn't know there's anything higher than 3D. There's 40. 40. Is that like time or space, the fourth dimension? I'm not sure. I don't even know. Back I just future, learned SAT scores sure. go above 1,600. So that's, that's call me Grandpa Detola. It's been about five years. I know. But. I'm a little behind the times. But we have an interesting case of the week for you that's on the cutting edge of dental technology. It's going to be an initial look at a product that we released the first of this year. It's the Bruxer Full Arch Implant Prosthesis. And in the weeks to come, I'll have an actual one to kind of show you. Uh, that's going to be used on a patient, and we'll be able to see it in three dimensions, maybe four dimensions Ooh. if we're lucky. Um, but today, I just want to give you kind of a preview because this is really an area where Bruxer uh, can serve a great purpose for patients. It's going to serve a lot more patients as a crown and bridge material. Uh, but when you see what we can do with zirconia here, you're going to see that for dental cripples, those unfortunate people in our practice who really aren't able to chew, or the ones who have broken a lot of hybrid dentures, this offers the opportunity for them to get almost as good as real teeth again. So let's take a look at that now. Well, hello, gorgeous. Let me introduce you to our newest product. This, this gorgeous piece of uh, technology is the Bruxer Full Arch Implant Prosthesis. And what you're looking at is a solid, thick piece of zirconia. Uh, because it's Bruxer, we don't put any layering ceramic on the facial surfaces, even though uh, it would probably let us achieve um, a, a little bit better aesthetics, but we don't like the idea of things possibly chipping off. We're very much um, attached to the idea of monolithic restorations. And our fracture numbers here in the laboratory really back us up because we see that any monolithic material fractures less than a bilayered material. So that's what we're trying to do. So that's a zirconia bridge that has been stained uh, on the tooth surfaces and the gingival surfaces uh, as well. And so we'll cover, um, as soon as I get some good models, we'll cover the clinical portion. Today I just want to show you how this is made uh, in the laboratory. And so what you see uh, over on the left is one of our technicians placing a denture setup try-in into a scanner to scan it. So this is a screw retained denture setup try-in that the doctor has taken and uh, screwed into a couple of the implants in the patient's mouth and together they can check phonetics, they can check aesthetics, they can check uh, function, the doctor can check and see how the tissue side of it is against the ridge and can make it as cleansable as they want or move teeth around. In fact, we can even mill that out of PMMA so you can screw it in and have the patient wear it home for a week or two uh, if they want. But uh, for most dentists, uh, they'll use the wax, try and move things around, maybe send it back to us once, have us change some things and send it back out. And once the dentist and the patient agree that everything looks good, they send it back to us and we're gonna scan in the scanner, we're gonna scan both sides of it, the tooth side and the tissue side, 
on the bottom and then we're going to scan uh, the master impression that we got from the dentist because basically what we're going to do is kind of a copy mill procedure and so by scanning this uh, denture setup try-in we're able to exactly duplicate this or replicate it in the milling of the zirconia bridge and so on the left there's the tissue side uh, being scanned and you can see uh, the two pictures the middle one and the one on the right that as soon as the milling process uh, is finished. Both the tissue side in the middle and the tooth side uh, on the right are exact duplicates of that denture setup try -in. And so this is really nice because you know um, once you're happy with what you have in wax, and working with wax is you know relatively straightforward and easy to do, that we're going to duplicate that for you in zirconia, which is far less friendly uh, to work with than, than wax, of course. Much more difficult, so it's easier to take care of it then. Now, we're going to mill this bridge, this prosthesis, out of zirconia like we would a Bruxer crown, but obviously it's going to be huge. And so this is one of our five-axis milling machines. There's going to be ten different tool changes. This actually takes six hours for this process. It's the longest milling strategy we have uh, of anything that we do here at the laboratory. We're getting to one of the fine burrs here. And uh, it really goes in and puts all the detail in there. In fact, the denture teeth that we use on that denture setup have a lot of anatomy on it. And uh, we're able to replicate that on this Bruxer bridge, which makes it more aesthetic and the teeth look more lifelike. So it's getting ready to do the facial surfaces on those anterior teeth in just a minute. Obviously, I can't show you the whole six hour uh, procedure as it goes through this, but the fact that it's a five axis mill allows the burrs to reach every surface on there. And so, um, once it comes out, that's what it looks like on the left. And so the, the mill actually goes in and cuts away that front part of that ring that used to be in front of the anterior teeth so that the fine burr can get in and, and put the detail on those anterior teeth. So it's pretty amazing that a human doesn't have to intervene at all. Now on the right, one of our technicians is intervening and removing the sprues uh, from the facial aspect. This is going to give us access to those teeth. And as we clean up the sprues on the left, uh, we can go in and any of the dust, just remove it with a paintbrush and make sure we have a nice, clean, clear uh, gingival margin. Because the next thing we're going to do is use some stains. These are the stains from uh, Zircon Zon. Uh, they've been doing full contour zirconia uh, in Europe for a couple of years, actually, before we start doing it uh, over here. And their stains are still really nice. You can see the tissue stain on the left and then two different incisal stains. And so our technicians first mark the gingival margin uh, on the facial and the lingual so they know exactly where to put it. And then they start placing this gingival colored stain on there with a brush. And zirconia is really a lot like a sponge. It absorbs uh, pretty rapidly and pretty thoroughly. It's going to take about 10 coats uh, of this stain to, to even you know saturate enough where we can take it to center and put it in the oven. And even then you'll see afterwards we have to do a little additional staining to really get it to look uh, like it's natural tissue. Once they finish with the gingiva, they move on and, and the blue incisal is used for translucency right at the incisal edge. And then we can create some uh, anatomy with the purple incisal, some translucency going up the tooth as well. And depending on the color uh, of the teeth themselves, um, now that we have Bruxer shaded 16, where we have these uh, zirconia pucks in 16 different shades, we don't have to do it as much, but you see that yellow stain uh, on the teeth, and that's for characterization if we have an A2 block, for example, uh, but we want to bring the value down just a little bit, we'll use some of that yellow stain that you see. So on the left, we haven't desprued on the lingual because we want that to be able to stand straight up in the oven. Uh, it works better in the centering oven for the penetration uh, of the dyes, and we put a little alumina block over it, and you can see um, but we leave that lingual support structure there as well. If you saw this in real life, it's pretty huge. This is actually going to shrink about 20% while it's centering and, and coming to its final strength. On the right, you can see that we've also painted the um, gingival stains on the tissue side of it as well. So when you're holding it out of the mouth, um, it really does look like uh, part of somebody's body or part of somebody's maxilla, if you will. So on the left, it's sitting in the little center cup. It's going to have an uh, alumina oxide cover put over it and it's going to go into the oven for about 12 hours and when it comes out it'll look like it does on the right so now it's reached um, its final strength it's you know 1100 megapascals of flexural strength 
And uh, at that point, it's more difficult to work on. And so uh, we've made all the changes that we can in the softer state, like you see on the left. And of course, it's also uh, shrunk that 20% and gotten down to the right size. It's not always 20%, but you can always tell by the weight and the density of the zirconia exactly how much it's going to shrink. But you can tell by the one on the right that it doesn't really look lifelike. The gingiva looks a little cadaverish at, uh, at this point. So next thing we do is remove that lingual support that we had on there and remove those sprues as you see on the left. You'll notice our technician is using a high-speed handpiece with one of the zirconia optimized diamonds, but is also using water. Now you should really always use water with zirconia when you're adjusting it. Even in the mouth, we'd prefer dentists do that. But there's just not a lot of dentists, including myself to be honest, who are willing to mark some occlusal spots, make a little adjustment with the water on, now go in, re-dry everything, mark the spots again, make another adjustment with the water on, re-dry everything. So I would encourage you if you're not doing it with water uh, to just use as gentle a touch as possible and just light little feather strokes when you're adjusting something like Bruxer in the mouth. Once the uh, sprues are completely removed, we're gonna sandblast uh, the bridge to get it ready for uh, uh, the application of the next stain. And these are some stains that we use from Ivoclar. We mix the orange and the basic red together to get the gingival color, and then we can do further um, incisal edge work with the universal stains. That pink that we put on pre-center, those 10 coats, is already soaked and deeped into the zirconia. This is just more surface stuff to give it uh, a better look. And you'll see what it looks like in a minute when it comes out after being centered. And those are uh, the titanium uh, abutment sleeves on the model. On the right, we're etching those. And then we're going to put some metal primer on those. And then on the right, you can see that's uh, Panavia F 2.0. These are going to be cemented into the zirconia bridge. And so we put it in, clean it up, put the OxyGuard, let it cure completely. And that's what it looks like. And it's, it's ready for um, now to be shipped out to the dentist and uh, to be placed into the patient's mouth. Of course, it's screw retained, so uh, obviously the patient can't take this in and out. And the big difference here when you compare this to what we do traditionally uh, with a bar and then a, an acrylic um, uh, overdenture kind of fused on top of that titanium, it reminds me of what zirconia has done for Crown and Bridge. So a Bruxer Crown replaces a PFM, which had a strong metal coping, but weak porcelain fused to the outside of it. And we feel the same way about hybrids. You've got that strong titanium bar underneath it, but you've got weak acrylic and uh, denture teeth fused to the top of that that tends to break all the time. I mean, you talk to prosthodontists or GPs and they're constantly having problems uh, with the hybrid dentures breaking. Never the titanium bar, always the acrylic uh, or the denture teeth on top of it. And so this again is a monolithic zirconia Bruxer product and it's replacing kind of a bi-layered removable solution, if you will, with the acrylic and the denture teeth being fused to the titanium. So it's pretty clear as we see these going in and get feedback from doctors that what Bruxer has kind of done to the PFM, it looks like the Bruxer full arch implant prosthesis is going to do to the acrylic hybrid denture. Now let's go to a segment we call Viewer Mail. This week's Viewer Mail comes to us from Dr. Kyler McEwen, and he writes, Hi, Dr. Detola and Megan. My name is Kyler McEwen. I'm class of 2014 at Tufts in Boston. I attended your CE course in Provo, Utah at the Academy of LDS Dentists. It was fantastic, by the way. I recently rewatched your reverse prep technique online, and I would love to try it. I tried to find them at the Yankee Dental Convention, but I can't find where to get those depth cut burrs. I asked Brassler, SS White, and Shofu, but no one had them. Who makes them? And do you have any samples? I would love to try it out. Thanks again. Your presentations are informative and absolutely hilarious. Wow. That's a matter of opinion. That's, uh, thank you, Kyler. I appreciate those kind words. And there's no better way to get free products from me than to liberally uh, throw those um, fake-ish co forced compliments. <laughs> uh, hopefully I actually felt that way. But... Uh, uh, we do. We have mountains of samples. We have. You have to drive around them when you come into the Glidewell parking lot uh, because there's just piles of bursts. Actually, to answer your question, the uh, you asked three companies and you stopped one company short. Had you gone to Axis Dental, they're actually the ones who were making that burr, and they were actually making it before I ever found out about it. I just needed to use something like that because I kept getting. Uh, dental technicians coming up to me saying, why didn't you prep more? You know, it's one of the downsides 
of being the dentist here at Glidewell is everybody you work on is a dental technician and you take an impression on them and they take it and they pour it up and they go to make a crown and you don't give them enough room and so you learn uh, quickly to reduce enough. In fact, we just hired another dentist here who was a ceramist here for 14 years and kept saying she wanted to go to dental school and finally did. And so when she graduated, she wanted to come back and work here, but she had already spent 14 years here. And she is the only dentist I've ever hired here that has not under-reduced a preparation. And so when you spend 14 years working on under-reduced preps, when you finally get a chance to prep, you're going to make sure that you don't make that same mistake. I never did that, so I kept making that same mistake. I think that when you graduate from school, and everybody, not just you, Kyler, should go to a laboratory and actually work making crowns for maybe six months while you're waiting for your board results and actually see what it's like to try to fabricate a crown when you don't have enough room because it would teach us all a valuable lesson and that's how I ended up with Axis's depth cutting burrs. We don't have piles of samples out there because we don't actually make them, Axis does. But you know what I do have, Megan? What? I have one sitting right Whoa! here. And it just happens to be sitting here because I haven't figured out how to be able to send it to the dentist in Iraq yet. We're working on it. But I, th I know. I think we have a U.S. connection now. So I do have a few of these sitting around. But, Kyler, I'd be more than happy to send you one of these. And uh, Axis has their reorder information on there if you want to order more. But uh, congratulations for coming into this thinking about using um, depth cutting bursts. And I don't even care if it's these. It's, it's just when dentists tell me that... Um, they know what 0.6 millimeters looks like for a Bruxer crown. Or I can, they'll say, I can prep, I know what one millimeter looks like for an Emax crown. And I contend you don't. Uh, just because of what I see here in the laboratory and the fact that nearly 70% of the posterior preparations we see are not properly reduced for the material that was prescribed uh, for that restoration. It just makes it so easy in my mind to put some one millimeter holes and then drill till you can't see them anymore. And now you know exactly where you are without having to guess. Once you take a dime into enamel, it gets really difficult to tell where you are. The only time you might get screwed by something like that is on a second molar that had a premature contact. You can reduce a millimeter and the jaws will move closer together and now you only have half a millimeter. That only happens on second molars. On the rest of the teeth, uh, typically not any kind of a problem. And you can confidently send it to your laboratory knowing that you reduced enough for a Bruxer crown or an Emax crown or whatever you happen to order. So. Do you have anything to go along with the burr kit? I do. Kyler, um, I'm about to one-up you. Really? Got... Don't be a one-upper. Sorry. <laughs> okay, go ahead. And don't do that chomping thing. Ugh. Okay, here it is. What is that? Better response, please. <laughs> this is a photo of you and me at oh, the desk. Okay, but it doesn't have any special significance? Besides me kind of doing like a karate chop on the right. end. Right. I have absolutely no idea what was being said at this moment um, or why you'd even want a picture of this. But I trust that you do as an avid watcher of Cherry Side Live. Include my name on the next letter. And um, this would be great hanging in your room at Tufts. That's right. Or, or, or um, put it up somewhere in Tufts. A good idea. In the school. I've lectured there. My cousin went there. And see, there the are two reasons right there. Well, Law it's perfect. school, though, but hey. Excellent. Well, Kyler, uh, either way, wherever you, if you put this up in Tufts or in practice uh, when you get out, um, anywhere you stick it's going to be fine. Stick it anywhere you want. And the burr kit, uh, let me know how it works for you and let me know what kind of results uh, that you get with it. And I think you're going to find with these kind of uh, predictable uh, crown preparations that uh, labs are going to be very happy with what you're sending them and able to make whatever restoration that you prescribe from them. All right, Megan, you got any news? I do. A prescription fraud investigation is underway after a dental office employee had an after-hours get-together at the office. The employee invited her boyfriend and others over when the office closed. Police say patients' credit card information may be compromised. Several items were stolen. Credit cards, blank checks, shoes, and authorities suspect that they also took a prescription pad and the doctor's signature stamp. Deputies believe the suspects may have called in and filled prescriptions at six pharmacies. Two suspects are in custody, a 24-year-old female and the 23-year-old boyfriend of the office employee. The male suspect was previously sought on parole violations. Both now face multiple charges. <laughs> Shoes? Shoes is odd. What? Whose <laughs> shoes were they taking? I, I like the employee, though, just deciding, you know what? We should have a party tonight. Um, 
Do you want to do it at your house? Well, no, it's kind of messy. Well, let's do it here at the dental office. Right. Because that's where parties happen. Exactly. And while we're at it, let's just steal a bunch of credit cards and fill prescriptions. Right. And those are some pretty cool kicks. I think I'll, I'll take those, too. What, what? Could, what could they have been? Like Crocs? I don't, I, you know, White honestly. White tennis shoes? Velcro tennis shoes like assistants wear? Or, um, when you were in practice, did you keep an extra pair of shoes at the office? I did not. No. Yeah, what is that? I, I don't, don't know. But it. I was hoping when you said it was a, they had a party that... Uh, I was hoping you would get to a detail where they just like opened up the nitrous tanks and just filled like the whole office with happy gas and right. everybody was walking around and even the no. cops got a little loaded when no. they came in. But that, um, I, I don't know how this employee thought, maybe she thought none of this would happen, you know, stealing prescriptions, uh-huh. patients' credit card info. That sounds like an organized gang being invited to a party right. and coming in and really doing a number on that office. Yeah, I, it's. I just and to think that you're you're not going to get caught. Right. Mark my words, things are not going to go well at her next review. No. That race she's been looking at. Not happening. Not going to happen. Sorry. Might even get fired. I would definitely and go think to that's going to happen. Anything yeah. else? Yes. <laughs> An Oregon man is suing the restaurant Outback Steakhouse for forty-eight thousand dollars over mashed potatoes. He claims he cracked his teeth while eating his meal, saying there were bits of broken porcelain in the potatoes. The suit states that the waitress told her managers, and they admitted to the plaintiff, that a plate had broke in the kitchen and pieces fell into the mashed potatoes. The suit faults the restaurant group for negligence. The diner lost two molars after his dentist said they had to be pulled and receive implant therapy. One of the restaurant group's managing partners says safety is very important to them and that it's really disappointing when someone gets hurt inside the restaurant. Wow, I'm really surprised that uh, that at, uh, employee orientation at Outback, they don't say if a plate breaks into the mashed potatoes and you serve them anyway, don't tell the customer that happened. <laughs> right? Insane. And this, like I said, it was in Oregon. Um, and actually, it was in Portland. And I know that you're going to speak coming soon for the uh, CR Dentistry update. That's right. And the course is actually being held at an Outback Steakhouse. No. Oh. No, it's not. But it is in Portland, so I know you love a Blooming Onion as much as the rest of us, but don't you dare go to that Outback. I feel like the Blooming Onions are are safer just because they have to go through the hot oil, whereas the mashed potatoes are in some big open vat. And of all the things that could land in there, you know, right. the guy next to it's sneezing, probably, and the broken plate. But let me say this, because okay. every time I see one of these cases, it's, it's always the same. Broken pieces of porcelain uh-huh. might cut your tongue, might cut your cheeks, they are not going to cause the loss of two molars in your mouth. Right. I mean, it's, just, it's not going to happen. We have people break PFMs and they never end up losing the two teeth on the other side because a piece of porcelain hit. And maybe you damage the PDL, maybe even break a little off of it. But losing two teeth and requiring implants, this is somebody who probably had pretty massive periodontal disease sure. and um, and saw a way that when this happened that they might be able to get something done for free. Right. And maybe yeah. there's not x-rays before showing that it was there. But uh, I'd like you to, to follow this and uh, okay, if we we'll can see. and kind of see what happens with it because um, I'd like to think that a jury wouldn't think that uh, some little shards uh, of a plate could cause the loss of, uh, of two molars. But uh, on the uh, scale of grotesque things that people have found in their food at restaurants, eh, fairly reasonable. Okay. You know, not a rat, not a cockroach, not a finger. Disgusting. So at least you can be happy about that. Secret to mashed potatoes, want to know? Yeah, tons of butter. Duh, but also cream cheese. Change your life. Wow. Yeah, just ask Brandon Strong. He'll tell you. You uh, you work cream cheese into every third episode, I'm pretty sure. I it's like the magic word. Are honestly you honestly didn't even think about that. Are you sponsored that? by Philadelphia cream cheese? No, but I am willing to be. I'm also doing a CR lecture in Philadelphia. Oh, my God. I might bring home some of the official cream cheese for you. Yeah, and actually, when you're in Portland, I want you to bring me back some of that ice cream. So all you Portland dentists, um, if you've ever been to Salt and Straw <laughs> ice cream, let me know what the best flavor is. All right, I'm sure it'll keep well on the flight home. <laughs> all right, that'll about wrap it up for this week's edition of Chairside Live. On behalf of myself, Megan, the CSL crew, and everybody here at the lab, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry. We'll see you next time. Credit cards, blank checks, shoes, and authorities suspect that they also took a prescription pad and the doctor's signature stamp. And find out why mashed potatoes are no longer on the safe list for those without teeth or something. <laughs> it's an elective procedure or unless like medical necessitates it, mes- medical needs necessitate it, then they won't do it, but or then they'll do it. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> Ha <laughs> ha
What am I saying? I think you're doing the bloopers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I think you're doing. I made sneaky meaties last night and they were amazing. Oh, oh yeah. here we go. Uh, you work cream cheese into every third episode, I'm pretty sure.